Hi everybody, Ethan Tuttle joined alongside Chris Cartman for Sun Devil Source here following Arizona State's 27 to 15 loss to Oklahoma State. Sun Devils dropped to one and one on the season. Chris, it's the first loss of the Kenny Dillingham era. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. What are your initial takeaways from this game? Well, once again, Ethan, uh, tale of two halves. I thought ASU had a very good first half. Offensively, I love the play calling. I thought that they had a very good approach to taking on this Oklahoma State team, especially the defense. Um, and then really the second half, it, it was a story of an inability to get any kind of drives going. Didn't run the ball, didn't have run replacements. Oklahoma State uh, made some good adjustments and ASU wasn't able to, to respond. And also ASU had big breakdowns or missed opportunities on several plays that I think ultimately were the difference in a close game like this. Yeah, following the game, Kenny Dillingham addressed the media and he said, running the ball is just gonna continue to get better. We saw some Wildcat tonight from Cameron Scadaboo. Um, but yeah, the run game, like you said, kind of a tale of two halves. The first half they were able to establish the run. Second half, it started to falter a little bit. So uh, what did you see from all that tonight? So look, let's start with the offensive line issues, okay? ASU started the season without Ben Coleman, who was supposed to be the left guard starter. Aaron Frost uh, was expected to be one of their top offensive linemen, but he tore an ACL last August. He's still all, not all the way back from, so he hasn't been out there. Uh, ASU lost Isaiah Glass, who had a foot in a boot uh, before this game, so he's not out there. Then uh, Cade Briggs, who was their top backup guard, didn't play, hurt his knee in practice Wednesday. And then Emmett Boley goes down very early on, first drive maybe, uh, with a serious leg injury. And on top of that, Joey Ramos is playing with his right hand in a club. So I've lost count, but that's like five of their top seven or eight offensive linemen who have serious to moderate injuries. It's a very difficult thing to overcome, especially when you're in the first year of trying to establish a program and you recruited a lot of these guys as D1 transfers because you needed them to get up, up there out of speed. So ASU's got Max Ian Encor out there at right tackle. He's not ready. And the reality is Oklahoma State dared ASU to run the football in the second half. They played this 3-3-5 scheme. They backed up their safeties, including their rover, and trying to take away those Rashada big play passing opportunities. They weren't there. ASU needed to be able to get some run game going, and they weren't able to do that. Part of it is the offensive line. Part of it is the running backs. You have Cameron Scadaboo, DeCarlos Brooks. They're not the shiftiest, most athletic, outrun you type yeah. guys. Yeah. They need blocking to set up well for them, and then they can get some yards after contact. Kyson Brown, ASU wanted to ramp him up in this game. First carry, gets hit, fumbles right away, doesn't go back out there again. Tevin White, not on the field until the fourth quarter. He's not practiced consistently. And then ASU's blocking, especially with the tight ends on top of their offensive line, also a big problem in this game. They went to the Sparky package, Wildcat, whatever you want to call it. They had 14 personnel, four tight ends on the field. By the end of this, Oklahoma State's playing its base defense, 3-3-5, still getting stops, including on fourth downs. So people are going to talk a lot on social media about the quarterback. But I just went through a litany of problems that they had, not even to mention Xavier Guillory dropping the ball. That's probably a touchdown. That would have changed the game. So they got massive problems beyond quarterback that are really the, 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 the main reasons that they're struggling. Yeah, you talked a little bit about the significance of those other factors outside of the quarterback position. Let's go ahead and address that quarterback position, though. It is a freshman quarterback. In, in his second start tonight on Saturday night, uh, what did you think of his performance? And also, uh, how much of this loss should be pinned on Jane Rashada, if any at all? Look, he's a freshman quarterback. He's not going to play flawlessly. He made mistakes out there tonight. He also stepped up in the pocket, takes hits, delivers the football, scrambles for first downs. He didn't play bad. It looked bad in the second half because of a lot of other issues around him. And also, he missed a few throws. He saw a defensive look that Oklahoma State really hadn't shown much that led to that interception. He's gonna learn from that. I said going into this season that there's gonna be high highs and there's gonna be some low lows. He's not gonna be ready 
But the problem is, is that if everybody else around him at wide receiver, tight end, offensive line, running back, if they all look good, Rashada looks good. Almost none of those groups look good tonight. Most of them look below average to mediocre. So, so it's not really your quarterback's fault that that happened. Is it possible that ASU maybe would have had a different outcome with Trenton Borgay or Drew Pine if he's healthy? Maybe. But a lot of the things that Oklahoma State was giving ASU, they still would have had to run the ball or find some screens, run replacements. Maybe they would have had a little bit more quick game that could have had some success. Oklahoma State was rallying well to the perimeter. So I don't think really that this was problems one, two, three, and four were not Jaden Rashada. Maybe if you get down to five or six. Yeah, yeah Jaden Rashada, just to throw some numbers out at our audience here, under 200 yards passing tonight uh, on 29 attempts. He had one interception as well with that touchdown. Some other numbers though, BJ Green defensively, three tackles, all of them behind the line. Chris, the Sun Devils were pretty dominant in the first half against Oklahoma State's run defense. That's something Kenny Dillingham mentioned post game as well. But in the second half, things changed there as well. So it just seems like it's another tale of two halves. What happened there with the defensive side of things? Look, they're on the field too much, first of all. They had a good first half performance, ASU's defense. Oklahoma State didn't run the ball well. I thought going into this game, we knew that they'd try to take that away, make Oklahoma State more one dimensional, try to make them have to throw the ball and, and, and carve up ASU. Problem is that ASU's offense being, you know, so inefficient led to ASU's defense being on the field too much in the second half, and guys were getting tired through the heart of that defense. They don't have Anthony Cooper. CJ fight just coming back. So their their defensive tackles, I think in particular, they're not holding up that well right now over the, the duration of a full game. And linebacker, they're average right now. Mm. And we knew that going into the season. We said what ASU's weaknesses, D tackle, linebacker. We talked about that with our audience. But still look, they gave up not even 300 yards of total offense in this game. They did well enough to win in most circumstances. Roe Torrance had a very costly penalty that uh, on a sack. I think it was Clayton Smith, maybe B.J. Green, one of, Clayton Smith maybe. Yeah. Should have been a second and 17. Oklahoma State goes and scores on that drive after a penalty that never should have happened. And the reality is, is that it was a, a pretty good performance by ASU's defense, but not good enough when there's so little margin for error. They also didn't get interceptions, strip sacks, you know, things that you gotta try to you gotta try to get a takeaway or two. I think that and that's partly luck. You're not gonna always be able to dial that up exactly. But I just think that they they a few plays they missed and then just they were asked to be, probably do a little bit too much. Kenny Dillingham mentioned to the media after the game that he believes that the team needs to learn how to respond and that that's what they're working on right now early in his head coaching career just working on getting this Sun Devil team to bounce back. From your experience and from seasons that you've seen previous, when Sun Devil teams get off to slow starts, what are the, the keys for them getting back into a rhythm of things and finding their way back into a season? It's a great question, and that's a hard thing to pinpoint, and I think yeah. it depends on the, the makeup of, of every single team and individual circumstances. Right now what I think they're missing is offensive leadership, guys who are going to have a tenacious attitude uh, and and just say we're not going to accept not getting the job done. We're going to be more physical. We're going to we're going to be more intense. We're going to work harder. Right now, I mean, it, it, part of it's the injuries. Part of it is you have a freshman quarterback. The, the the types of the guys that you have. Dillingham's talked about it out there at practice. They're up and down because they don't have a reliable, consistent leaders on that side of the field, and that's something that takes time has to be developed, it's not an easy fix, you know? And Oklahoma State is, is I thought this was a game that ASU probably should have won, really. They're probably, from a talent, they're well coached, from a talent standpoint, they're probably in the bottom third of the teams that ASU is gonna play this season. And with the game being at home, 105 or whatever it was, at kickoff, this was a ripe situation for ASU. So. They're now in a pretty 
they're going to get better probably as the season goes on, especially with a freshman quarterback and some of these things. Maybe they'll get healthier. But um, they're, in a, they're in a very difficult spot yeah. because they don't have much margin for error, and they're going to need to be able to be more multidimensional on the offensive side of the ball. Football still won and lost in the trenches. It, 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 okay, it's not sexy. It's not the. It's not the all the things that people want to watch, but you got to be able to block, and you got to be able to tackle, plug holes, and ASU in that type of a game right now, they're not quite there. So Arizona State obviously gets the or excuse me loses tonight against Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State played Central Arkansas last week. I believe they won by 14. They won. Uh, by two possessions here tonight once again. So what does that say about where Arizona State's at right now? Oklahoma State, not the hardest team that ASU's going to have to face this season. Look, um, this was probably the second, third, or fourth most winnable game on ASU schedule. And they're going to have some opportunities, I think, to you know surprise some people and get better on offense. They do have a big play capability. Problem is, opponents are going to learn from this game Oh, hey, let's make them run the ball. Let's take away that Jaden Rashad a big play capability. Let's make them extend drives via running the ball, screens, things of that nature. And they're not going to be able to put a big number on the board. And the Pac-12 is filled one through ten. You take away, like, Stanford and all the other teams, maybe UCLA, they're, they're filled with teams that can put up big numbers via passing attack. So the reality is... ASU is going to have a hard time this season, especially with these injuries that we're talking about, getting several more wins. Positive thing is they're still going to have six more games here. So all, any of those games they can win. They go to Cal on the road. That's not one of the better offenses. They got a, they got a chance to win that game. And we'll see if they can get some, some momentum. UCLA on the road, not one of the better offensive teams. So we'll see. But – they got to get better, and they just got to focus on fundamentals and, and, and getting a, a greater intensity and purpose about themselves and leadership, particularly on the offensive end. Long road ahead. We'll be along for the ride. Sun Devils fall today. They're 1-1 one one after this 27-15 loss. That's Chris Cartman. I'm Ethan Tuttle. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.